It is late Saturday afternoon on this June 1st, 2013, the official start of hurricane season, and welcome back to 28storms.com. Of course, with it now being the first day of hurricane season, we're going to be rolling out more in the way of tropical weather-related information day by day. We are going to continue our daily video outlook each and every day here, and we also have a brand new hurricane season forecast, which just was posted online within the past 30 minutes or so. If you go to our main page, you can find the link over near the top and it'll bring you to the forecast and you can see all of the latest parameters and while we think that this is going to be a highly active season in terms of the total numbers we are expecting 17 named storms none of those becoming hurricanes and four of those the ones that you really want to pay attention to are the major hurricanes and you're going to want to have to keep a very close watch on these as we get deeper into the season the climatological peak is more so towards August and September but that doesn't mean we can't see activity a little bit quicker, more so in the months of June and July. Also, if you scroll further down the page, we do have more details as to where we think the greatest landfall probabilities are going to be located. So definitely go ahead and take a look at that whenever you have you some time. And I know it's a rather long read, but it is fairly interesting, especially if you are a hurricane enthusiast or simply a resident that's concerned about the tropics along the southeast United States. Also, we do already have one broad area of low pressure in the lower Gulf of Mexico and Bay of Campeche. The National Hurricane Center is giving this area a 10% chance of tropical cyclone formation within the next 48 hours, so this will be the first area to watch here as we begin the new season. As we take a look at the regional visible satellite, you can see that we have a rather disorganized area of showers and thunderstorms that extend all the way from the southwest Atlantic and Bahamas westward through southern Florida, the northwest Caribbean, and southern Gulf. The main remnant area of low pressure that we're watching is partially related to what was Tropical Storm Barbara in the eastern Pacific. That storm ended up making landfall across southern Mexico, and part of the remnants have made it into the very far southern Gulf and Bay of Campeche. Although this area is highly disorganized, and we don't have much in the way of significant convection, other than some of the thunderstorm activity that is developing over the Yucatan Peninsula. As we take a look at the water vapor image, you can see that there is a lot of dry air over much of the central and northern Gulf. This is going to help to limit any chance of tropical development within the next several days, not to mention the moderate to strong vertical wind shear coming from the west over much of the Gulf of Mexico. And as you can see here, the best upper level shear, or lack thereof, is located over the inland portions of Mexico where the wind shear values are less than 10 to 15 knots. As we take a look at the North American steering pattern, we see that there is a very significant long wave trough out across the central and eastern United States. This is the same trough that has been swinging across the central plains and generating the severe weather, including tornado outbreaks, that we have been extensively covering on our Facebook and Twitter accounts. And you can see that this trough is forecast to remain over the eastern U.S. through at least the next three to five days, as being advertised by this most recent run of the ECMWF model. And eventually, we suspect that this trough is going to steer any activity in the Gulf northeast towards Florida and possibly up the southeast up towards the Carolinas. The GFS model is also in fairly good agreement with the most recent European solution, and therefore it is depicting as many as 1 to 5 inches of rainfall with locally higher amounts across much of southern and central Florida, and the National Weather Service will likely have to issue flash flood watches within the next few days. The only forecast model that is aggressively showing tropical development in the Gulf from this feature is the Canadian CMC. As you can see here, it is developing at least a tropical storm before it makes landfall near Sarasota, Florida, and then it works its way up towards the north near South Carolina. However, the Canadian CMC has a notorious bias for overdeveloping tropical cyclones and disturbances. Although the chances for development are still relatively low, we're still going to keep a very close watch on the southern Gulf over the next week, as we do still have a very broad area of low pressure down here, and it will be interacting with this tropical wave-like feature that is moving into the Gulf out of the northwest Caribbean, and even if this system were to not develop, we're still going to be looking at a heavy rainfall threat for much of central and southern Florida. So with that said, please stay tuned to 28storms.com for updates, and of course the National Hurricane Center for the latest tropical weather outlooks.